Hey, how's it going? Today I want to do a tutorial to talk about using user data with Redshift and Redshift proxies. Uh, this is something that uh, I was talking with my friend Rob about. Uh, we were recently working on our project and you know it's like sometimes you have scenes where you're populating a lot of assets across the scene and you want to be able to create variations within it and so uh, I came up with this uh, quick little demo just to show like two different potential ways that you could use user data to change out things. One is using textures and one is using colors. Um, so I'm going to show those and show it on two different scenes and then uh, show it an example and then I'll dive into how I created it. So this is a sample scene. I'll just uh, do a render region for one of these cans. We'll just say this can. I froze the tessellation and the geometry just so that it kind of update quicker. Uh, so if I select this one uh, you can see that I have user data here and we can change so I have it set up as option maybe you have like a logo on something and you're unsure of whether or not which one you want to use or you just want to create variation here I have this you know little uh, integer that we can change to uh, tell Redshift like that we want to switch textures uh, so there's like three different texture options and then this other example that I have set up here uh, so here's our other proxy where I have it set up with colors and you can just you know change the color and have multiple variations. So those are two setups so let me uh, walk you through how I did those. Alright so here's our uh, original sourcing that we uh, first created all the proxies from and stuff. So uh, I have a uh, basic material that just has the texture plugged into a color layer going through the diffuse and then I have the other two uh, textures brought in as well and so the first option we want to do is just do the texture swap which is kind of like the easiest so uh, the first thing we want to do is add our user data so if you go to our object and uh, click on user data add user data so the first type we want to do is um, you can kind of name the variable anything you want I'm just going to do option um, it's just important to remember it because we're going to reference it. And the data type we're going to set it to be integer because we want a whole number. And then um, we have three textures, so it's 0, 1, 2, so we're going to set the max to 2 and press OK. And then now we have this little uh, data to access. And then now in our shader graph, <clears throat> so I am using the shader graph. <laughs> I'm comfortable with it. Um, it's what I like. You can do this in nodes or whatever, but it's just what I'm comfortable with, so that's what I'm using. Uh, I'm going to type in user data and then we're going to get integer user data and again that attribute name uh, we want it to match to what we added to the geometry so we're going to call this option and then the default zero is fine because our default one is the one that uh, is our hero one and then we just need a way to uh, tell this what to swap and to do that we're going to use the shader switch and then uh, you're gonna want to pipe your user integer data, user integer data into the selector, and then put our textures into zero, one and two, like so. And then we're gonna plug this into the same place where the texture was going. So layer one color in this instance, and. Um, Actually, you know, we're just going to pipe this directly into the diffuse because we don't need this. And then we see it updated, and now we can uh, press start on our IPR. And I'm going to go ahead and just freeze the geometry and the tessellation because we're not changing either of those. We're just playing with the textures. <coughs> and that way it'll update faster since we have the... I mean, there are some displacements and uh, subdivisions happening, so it just kind of ignores that and and tells it to not try to refresh that while we're just playing with uh, the look dev. So I'm going to do a region render, uh, isolate down to the can, and then uh, we can go to the geometry and now we should just be able to play with this option and it quickly switches through our different texture options. So that's our first approach. Uh, let's do our second which is playing with color. So I'm going to pause this. Uh, we're going to <laughs> Let's, uh, what's the best way to do this? We'll call this um, optional one, and then we'll make it a two. And we're gonna create a second shader and call this one 02. And drag this onto our material or swap it out. So on our geo for our second option, we're gonna wanna replace this data. So let's go to add user data, 
um, we're going to delete the option called this color and then the data type uh, we're going to want to click color and then the default value uh, we know is red so we'll just set that to red so that if there isn't you know picked this is the color that it goes to uh, and now let's go access that into our material so in our material the same we're going to do something similar here um, so i'm going to delete that and we're going to add a um, shift c do uh, user data again this time we're going to want color and then same as before we need to type in that same attribute name so we did color um, and the default doesn't matter here it's just if the attribute that it's looking for is missing then it defaults to that but um, we don't need to worry about that and we're going to put this on the base layer of our color layer and these textures <coughs> we're basically going to you know just do uh, just one texture so we'll i don't really have all the layers to this we're, this is just like a hack texture thing so i'm the quickest easiest way to do this is if i throw this into this um color layer on layer one um we can set it to lighten and it basically takes the light values and puts it over the the base color that we're changing out so we can press uh start on our ipr again i'm leaving the freeze geometry and tessellation on just so it loads quicker so now we should have a quick composite of our texture being uh, lightened over our color and then we can change out this color and now we have something that we can play with variation uh, so yeah that's that's a fun interesting way to, of adding variation to your um, objects but now we want to translate that to proxy so how do we do that so i'm going to turn off our ipr and i'm going to uh, i'm going to drag out this just so that I export this you know just to try to keep it clean i'm going to select our geometry our group here and we do file export and we're going to do rs proxy uh, the important things to check here are that we're adding the proxy of the scene and i don't want to remove the exported objects because this is my scene that i'm just demoing out of so we're going to leave it in there import the proxy put it where it is um, we're doing a current frame we're not doing an animation and uh, the scale is one so we hit okay on that uh, i have a folder for proxies i've already exported this but i'll overwrite it so this is the option one so i'll do demo one and then it imports it into our scene i'm going to hide that for a second and then just swap out this geometry uh, and re-export this one more time same situation just call it option two uh, go into my proxies demo two and it brings it in so now that we have both of our proxies in our scene uh, we're going to go ahead and hide our original geometry and let's just grab the second one and offset it in the back so that we can see both of them and select the uh, select both of them and we're going to change their display type to mesh so that we can see them in the scene and then we're going to want to do override user data so what this is going to do is tell our proxy that we still want to use the um, shader user data that is set up inside of it but we do want to manipulate that on our proxy object per object basis um, so what we need to do though is you'll notice that the user data is not on the proxies by default so what we need to do is go to our original meshes and copy so if we go to manage user data you can right click and do copy and we're going to want to copy these to uh, the proxies so user data add user data uh, paste uh, is one way of doing it or apparently you can go to this one hit user data uh, copy i think you can press paste user data that works too <laughs> so now we have the uh, color information and our option selector on our proxies and if we press uh, start on our ipr uh, we should be able to just read the tessellation again Uh, so now if we start our IPR, uh, we should be able to change out our user data and see that reflected on our proxies. Uh, now that we've copied over the 
uh, data from the geometry to the objects. So here we have the color, we can just kind of play with that, have our variations. In our other one, we should be able to toggle between our different logos. And then to further illustrate that, you should be able to duplicate these out. Say you had a bunch of these on the tabletop, and you should be able to give each of them their own unique choice of texture. And there you have it. So now we have our three proxies with uh, different textures and the ability to control that after the fact. Um, so hopefully that helps. Um, if there's anything that I was doing that, you know, there's a better way to do it, please leave it in the comments. Uh, this, again, this is a great like foundation. You could definitely build upon this and add complexity to it, but this is kind of like a really basic way of adding that flexibility to your workflow. So hope it helps and um, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.